see the people gather round that great and holy man, bringing all the sick and suffering, coming to him all who can. See him look with great compassion as they fainted by the way, how he called them gently to him. He is just the same today. He is just the same today. This is a, a bad day for Watson Runs Health, um, but, but we are glad that Pastor Gene and Pastor Amy could get away and that they, um, and hopefully they will be able to have some time to relax. I, I am sure you are aware of Pastor Amy's uh, brother died this week and, uh, and they were expecting his death. Uh, as you know, they went down in May uh, to visit him and she talked to him for the last time she said the night before he died so be, be a prayer for her even if you're expecting it death is really hard uh, when you have a family member die um, I'm glad to be here as as uh, as you've already been told a WPA camp meeting is already going on we started last night had a great service last night and we'll go on over there tonight for the service tonight. Hope you get a chance to come over. Pastor Steve Rennick from uh, Denver, Colorado is uh, with us. He has been the, the uh, he, he's been the teacher or the professor at the Rift Valley um, Kenya Bible, uh, Bible School in uh, Kenya. As a matter of fact, he started the school uh, Kima Theological Seminary is what it's called, and he has been there, and he has also taught in our Church of God um, College, Bible College in Fritzlar, Germany. So, and then he came back to the States and pastored one of our larger churches in Indianapolis, Indiana, before he became the state pastor at Denver, Colorado, for the Colorado State. And so he has the role that I have here in Pennsylvania. He's a great speaker, and uh, we're having a great time, and I hope you get a chance to come on over. The services, evening services, start at 7 o'clock. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn to Isaiah 53. We'll be looking there a little bit later. When I was a little girl, we had a practice of collecting S and H green stamps. Yep. Does anybody remember S and H green stamps? Yep. I was surprised to find out that they started in 1896. It was called Sperry and Hutchinson's green stamps. It was a line of trading stamps. If you don't know what they are, a line of trading stamps. You would collect the stamps. You'd get them at gas stations or grocery stores. You would get them at. Um, at uh, different big box companies, things like that. You would collect them and then you'd put them in a book and you'd collect the booklets of green stamps, trading stamps, they were called. And, and you, could, you could buy things with those stamps that you collected. You could redeem the stamps for something like, um, there was a catalog that came out. They even had stores. S&H had a, had a store that you could go in. I remember as a little girl going in with my mom and dad and they would buy things. You could buy toys there. You could buy coolers there. You could buy furniture there. I was looking online this week and found that that uh, somebody said that they had two chairs that their parents had bought with the green stamps and they still had them in their home. Um, you could buy a guitar there. Your first guitar you could buy with s &H green stamps. The thing is it went on from 1896 to 1980s. 1980s and the company was just shut down in 2020 which shocked me because I hadn't heard from them uh, about them since I was a little girl we often think of salvation like a line of trading stamps mm -hmm. we think of them like like s and h stamps if I work hard enough if I put enough stamps in my booklet I will earn enough 
to attain spiritual healing or salvation, eternal life. I can purchase or redeem eternal life if I just save enough green stamps. Conventional wisdom normally says that healing, emotional, physical, even spiritual healing comes from something that we do differently, that I personally do differently. But that is not what happens. Healing doesn't just happen by something that I do. Healing happens because of something Jesus did. Something Jesus did for us. You see, we are not able to heal ourselves. We cannot accrue enough SNH green stamps or brownie points. We cannot be good enough to save ourselves. Oh, I've tried. I've tried. If I if I feel like I wandered away, I remember when I was a young person, if I felt like I wandered away, if I just went to church a little more, if I just tithed a little more of my money, if I sang in the choir, if I taught a Sunday school class, if I just accepted more responsibility in the church, then that would make me good with God. And to be truthful, we all have that a little bit. When I was, uh, my husband and I were church planters in Australia early on in my 20s. And we were planting a very small church for the Church of God on the Gold Coast of Australia. An independent church came in. And this denomination, this denomination sent these people over to start a church. And he asked a little bit about the Church of God because he was fascinated. What they wanted to do was use our facility. We were in a kindergarten building. That's where we planted our church. And they wanted to use our facility to possibly plant their church too. They wanted to borrow it or use it in the afternoons perhaps while we were using it in the morning, which was fine. We had a conversation. And he was, he was interested that we don't have membership. He was interested that we don't that we don't have specific rules that you have to follow to be a part of the church. And he said, I don't, I don't understand that because, because if somebody comes to the altar for us, we don't let them get up from the altar until they commit to stop whatever their sin is, whether it's smoking or drinking or gambling or cheating on their wives, whatever it is. We don't let them get up from the altar unless they commit to stopping that. But it doesn't work that way, friends. We don't convict a person of their sins. God convicts the person of their sins. And we don't heal or save a person. We don't tell them, okay, you're good to go now. By his stripes, we are healed. That's what Isaiah is telling us. The caution, the, it's not a problem, but the, but the caution that I want to tell you with being a church that believes in holy living, which is what the Church of God is, is that we tend to focus a little too heavenly, heavily on our works. We tend to focus on what we should do or what we shouldn't do, the do's and the don'ts. Oh, I know we don't say that, but we do have a huge list of do's and don'ts. Do read your Bible every day. Do go to church whenever the doors are open. Do tithe, do sing in the choir, do volunteer whenever is there a need. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't chew, don't go with girls that do, don't dance, don't wear short skirts, don't gamble, don't wear a tie, used to be the rule in the Church of God in the turn of the 20th century. Don't miss church ever. In and of these, of themselves, these things aren't inherently good or, or bad, either one. But none of these things will save you, no matter what you may do or how much you may do. This may come as a surprise to you, but reading your Bible every day, as good a practice as that is, will not spiritually heal you. It may bring about conviction, for sure. It may bring understanding that you didn't have before, but it will not heal you. Jesus heals you. His sacrifice, his bruises, it is by his stripes we are healed. Read with me if you have your scripture from Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? 
For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of the ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should des desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of suffering and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, by his stripes, we are healed. All, all we like sheep have gone astray. Mm -hmm. We have all turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before shearers is silent, he did not open his mouth. He poured out, I'm in verse 12 now, he poured out for himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. You see, we are not able to heal ourselves spiritually. No matter how good you are, and I'm sure some of you are very good, you need God. I need God. Each one of us is in the same situation spiritually because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So each one of us is, is, is on this level playing field in that we have sinned, and we need someone to help us out of that sin. We cannot save ourselves, but God has provided a way through the circumstances. A sacrificial lamb. The sacrificial lamb is the Old Testament, Old Testament Abrahamic story. And it, it, it comes from there where a spotless lamb was, was a highly valued commodity. It was something that everybody wanted to save because they used those for the sacrifices. You could only have a spotless lamb for the sacrifice. You couldn't have a lamb with any blemish, with uh, any scar on them. You could not have a lamb that perhaps had, a, had an ear that was tweaked. You couldn't have that as a sacrifice. It had to be the perfect sacrifice. And that was the sacrificial lamb that you used to put on the altar right. to pray to God. Well, Jesus was the embodiment of that Old Testament metaphor. Jesus, the perfect lamb of God, is the sacrifice for our own sins. We are healed not on our own merits. We are here healed spiritually by his goodness, by his sacrifice, by his willingness to be flogged, his willingness to be bruised for us. Uh, from the time of 1992, I was a licensed professional counselor. I have, I have been that for all that time. And for 18 years, I had a private practice. Now, I believe in the value of professional counseling. Yeah. It is valuable to understand yourself, to explore the ways the things that have happened in your past have, have gotten you to the place you are, the whys and the hows of our situations and our reactions. That is valuable. Mm -hmm. Counseling certainly can help you, can, can help you on your way to healing, both emotionally and physically, and even spiritually, but counseling will not heal you. Right. Counseling in and of itself doesn't have the ability to heal you because we are healed by the sacrifice that comes from Jesus' life mm -hmm. and voluntary death. Right. In, in the um, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who recognize that they have no resources to heal themselves, that they have no ability, they are totally poor. They have no ability to come to a point of full healing. 
Theirs is the kingdom of heaven because they submitted themselves to God. So for me to say, God, I've tried everything I can. I've done everything I can in the church. I give to the poor. I do everything I can to volunteer whenever I can. But I can't heal myself. That only comes by submitting myself to God and saying, God, I'm yours. Take me and do what you want with me. We are only healed to spiritual health by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. Healing could not come through anything we do, but only through Jesus. Let me go back to the scripture which says in five, upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. Jesus had to submit to the indignity of, of being arrested, of being stripped, of being beaten, and ultimately of being hung on a cross of shame to pay for my sins and to pay for your sins. The perfect Lamb of God, the full representation of God in the flesh, right here walking on earth, was the only one who could stand in my place and fully atone for my sins. That was the punishment that made me whole. That is the punishment that made you whole. Willingly, in verse 7 it says, he did not open his mouth. He did not say, this isn't fair, I haven't done anything wrong. You all lied about me. Not only that, your court was a sham court. He didn't say that. He walked to the cross knowing that he was doing it for you and he was doing it for me. My friends, we could not have been healed spiritually or physically or emotionally without Jesus being bruised for us. We are healed by his stripes. Isaiah reminds us that nothing we could have done would have made us whole. It was only Jesus, the perfect one, who had to present himself as a substitute, as payment to redeem me for my sins and my failures. And if I am healed by his stripes, truly healed, then I recognize that my healing took place not by my goodness, but by God's goodness. It's the only way to be healed. As I was preparing this sermon, I thought of this song that we sing, Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I am tired. I am weak. I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. When my way groweth drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my light is almost gone, hear my cry. Hear my call. Hold my hand lest I fall. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. It's, it's a song that, that confesses, I can't do it on my own. I can't stand on my own. I need you, God, to save me. You see, the ultimate plan of God is not my spiritual healing. The ultimate plan of God is spiritual health. Spiritual health help, divine help, only comes from God. The physical healing that you see in the Bible, do you notice whenever Jesus heals someone, he says, your sins have been forgiven. Rise up, take your bed and walk. He said that to the man who was lame. He said that to the blind man. He said that to the woman who was found in sin. He said that to the woman with the hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. He said, you have been healed. Your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. You see, that physical healing is, is a precursor. It's a, it's, it's, it's a metaphor for our divine healing that comes from God. But sometimes... Sometimes the understanding of healing, of our healing, comes gradually. We, we don't just get up from the altar or get up from our, from our moment of prayer 
and that's it. We're good to go. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Forgiveness is immediate. Make no mistake about that. God will forgive immediately. He doesn't hold on and say, well, I'm just going to let you suffer a little bit longer. But the healing of our minds, the healing of ourselves is not always immediately. Sometimes there's, there's so much damage. Either damage done to me or damage I have done myself. That it takes time to live into that healing that God is doing in my life. And God is patient, and God is understanding, and God wraps us in his love and says, I am healing you. Rise up. Take your bed and walk. We are often our own worst enemies. God forgives immediately, but we have more trouble forgiving ourselves, don't we? I know I myself think back to to some things that I have done in my past. And I think, how can God forgive me of that? I look in the mirror and I think, how can God love me? But God does. But God forgives. But God loves. All we have to do is confess and ask him to forgive. And he says, yes, he didn't say, no, not you. Not you. Yours was too bad. He always forgives. We strive, we struggle, we try to force our healing and force our acceptance by God who already accepts us. It's only when we fall back on him and accept his gift of life that we realize that healing. Because healing doesn't come because we changed. Change happens because we have been healed. I want to say that again. Healing doesn't come because we changed. Change happens because we have been healed. Mm -hmm. The healing causes a change in me. And just so, spiritual healing must take place before we change. I can't change enough. I can't do enough to be spiritually healed. All that is is trying to collect s and green stamps. <laughs> the amazing thing about this is that he was bruised for everyone's transgressions. He was not just bruised for your transgressions. He was not just bruised for my transgressions. He was not just bruised by, by Pastor Gene and Pastor Amy's transgressions. He was bruised for everyone's transgressions. Not just those of this us in this room. Not just those of us in the church of God. Not just those of us who see it. But he was bruised. He was, his stripes has healed all of us. He offers that to every one of us. Everyone who has ever breathed, not just those with little transgressions, not just those who grew up in the church, not just those who look like we do or, or what a good Christian should look like, not just Americans, not just those who know churchy's language, which those of us in here probably do, not just those who smell good or those who look good or those who dress appropriately. Not just those I think should be healed because, friends, I don't get a vote. God gets to decide. He was bruised for all our transgressions. Even at the last minute, remember the thief on the cross? The very last minute, there's probably somebody saying, well, look, he just waited because he was desperate. I mean, he was about to die. Of course he asked for forgiveness. It doesn't matter. Jesus was bruised for his transgressions as well. Even those that don't deserve it. Even for those like me who don't deserve it. So what do I do? What do I do with Isaiah 53, 5? We've read that. That that scripture is something that you hear frequently. We fall on Jesus' mercy. God doesn't love you more or me more. His love is full for each person. Every single person who ever breathed a breath, God's love for that person is full. God doesn't half love anybody. God loves everyone. Full enough that, that he took on our punishment and died for us. Don't count on yourself. Don't count on your strength. 
Don't count on your goodness or your worthiness. Because like me, you're not worthy. You are no more worthy than the most heinous of sinners that has ever walked this earth. Neither am I. We lean on God for our righteousness. You can trust God. He is fully and totally trustworthy and fully and totally able to heal you, to heal me, to heal anyone who ever accepts that. And you don't need any book of stamps to take and be redeemed. Let's pray. God, we need to be reminded, I need to be reminded frequently that it is not my goodness that has saved me and that I am no better than anybody else. Your bruises, your stripes on your back, your hanging on the cross is what has saved me. And Lord, help me to continue to lean on you for my goodness. Help me to lean on you for my worthiness. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive all the glory and the power and the honor. Help me to understand that by your stripes I am healed. In Jesus' name we pray. The same today. Just the same today. He is just the same today. Just the same today. Yes, He healed in Galilee, set the suffering captive free.